morning, everyone. I didn't have any dreams. Good morning, uh, if indeed it is morning where you are, and I'd like to talk about the next project. There is another project that I have started, and um, I apologize for the delay in doing anything new, but there's been a lot going on behind the scenes, particularly in the software area. We'll cover that a little bit later, but I get asked a question a lot. Is bigger better? You have seen this little BMO boy, our, our take on the Game Boy in BMO format, and uh, the, the plans of this are, are on Thingiverse. You can download them and give it a try. It's basically a 3D printed body with a bunch of electronics inside. This, however, is not 3D printed. Um, I started making these a while ago. What it is, it's a piece of laser cut wood or pieces of laser cut wood that fit together in a nice box. But the problem with this, there isn't a lot you get for free when laser cutting. There are no real mounting points that you, you can get. Uh, you have to add threaded inserts and things and glue them on there and getting that registration exactly right is a bit of a chore. Plus you may have noticed this BMO is a bit angular. Not angrier, but angular. Um, doesn't have the radius. And I get asked, how do you make that radius on there? And it's, it's not hard, but you need a router table and you're kind of constrained to whatever um, woodworking tools you have available and what's actually on the market, which is this is a half inch round over radius. I actually don't like it. It needs to be a little more of a radius and you don't get to choose that stuff. Whereas with this one, I got to pick whatever radius I thought was cool. Um, and I think this has a, a softer look to it and I think um, it, it looks better overall. So what did I do? I went ahead and I scaled this up to this size. And what happened? We got a big one uh, in black, but it will get sanded down and painted um, a similar color. It'll get, it'll get painted to a BMO color here. Uh, this is 3D printed in color. This filament I can't really find anymore. I, but this is actually painted. And I like this paint a lot because I think it looks the correct color and it's somewhat metallic looking, so I think it'll look really good on this. But being able to do a, a, a 3D print like this for a while, it, it was very difficult. You needed a pretty expensive industrial printer. But nowadays, um, capabilities have gone up and prices have come down. And a company called Raise 3 d has this really cool printer that actually printed this whole thing, this whole body, in one shot. Um, the back panel was printed by itself, obviously. But... Um, the, the legs, they just were printed separately and put on, but um, the arms will be attached to servos inside here. But this thing was printed in one shot, which was pretty cool because inside are all the necessary screw points and mount points. All I had to do was take some brass inserts and put them in the correct holes and boom this thing was ready to assemble it is so cool so I'm gonna spend the next couple of posts sanding this down priming it and painting it um, but I want to show you what's going to go into it before I get all involved in that um, so what does it have uh, you can kind of see it it has you know the speakers uh, much bigger speakers than BMO boy we're using a Pi 4 because we have a lot of new software we're working on and it needs the Pi 4's processing power. Namely, we have uh, a, a complete window manager for BMO, which um, I will be documenting soon, and some custom games that are completely native C++ and uh, they run at 60 frames per second. Uh, nothing emulated, no retro gaming stuff, no Pi game, none of that. It's just raw horsepower. Um, blasting games to the screen. They're 2D games, but they, they're they cool games. And what else we have in here, you can see we have the servos on the side. Um, not a big servo fan, it gets asked for a lot and it's a holdover from the Astro Beam. Astro Beam is what we had to have servos for, so 
they got thrown into BMO Boy. And um, there the front panel buttons will work. Um, I've, I've tested them out. They, they do have um, feedback uh, and everything. Two front panel um, USB ports. So it's basically all the same as this except bigger. And instead of this little, this is a composite screen uh, because of the size. It's very hard to find an HDMI screen. This form factor, this size. By form factor, I mean 4.3 form factor. Um, this is a full HDMI LCD. So it is much better integrated with the Pi. And plus, the Pi 4 has dual HDMI outputs, so we can do an external output if we need to. For the power source, this is the back panel. This will get good on there, and then this back panel is held in with, with um, uh, magnets. There's some magnets on the back. Just going to use a standard. Oops, well, I'll take that off for now. USB battery pack. Uh, I really like this particular battery pack because it puts out 5.25 volts, so it's just really what you want for the Pi because you need a little extra kick because you're going to lose some voltage. Um, and there's an on off switch here, too. I'm foregoing using um, a LiPo battery pack like I do for this and the Power Boost, which is really cool module, but this is going to draw close to one and a half amps when it's all fired up. I don't think these LiPos and the Power Boost can sustain 1.5 amps um, for any continuous period of time. These tend to go up to 2 amps, so I'm going to kind of stick with this. Um, it just simplifies things a lot more. Uh, if, if you've put one of these together, you realize there's a lot crammed in there. So there you have it. We have Big Bima coming soon to a video blog near you. And check out Ray's 3D, and I'll, uh, uh, the link for the printer is in the description here. That's something worth looking into. If you want to do this, I will post the plans like I did for this. Those printers are coming way down in price, and you're probably thinking, well, I don't really either have room for it, or it is maybe still a little on the pricey side for, you know, a 3D printer. It's not, let's say, you know, um, something you need in every single household. And contact your makerspace. Local makerspaces will have budget for that sort of thing. And uh, the Ray 3D printer is, is what this was done on, and it's it's perfect for this sort of thing because it's a dual uh, head printer. I like to print with a support material that's not the same. I print, I print ABS. I like to use hips for a support material because it, it, it adheres very well to ABS, but also breaks away incredibly easily. It, it's dissolvable, but I hate doing that. It's all gummy and stuff, but usually just breaking it away is good enough. So that's why I tend to use um, ABS. It, plus it sounds better because it does not melt as quickly as PLA. So you can get kind of aggressive with your sanding. Plus you can use an acetone bath to smooth it out. Um, not super critical for this. I'm going to hit it with a lot of primer and then sand it a lot of flat edges so you, you don't have to worry about losing any sort of detail or anything. Um, so we'll cover that in the next episode here but there it is big bemo monolith from 2001 a space odyssey whatever you want to call it but it's it's going to be green when we're done and um, stay tuned for that and we'll be back